I have learned the productivity system that is helping me to organize my life. I have always been obsessed with productivity and I always tried multiple types of tools, multiple types of systems, but independently on the tool that I was using at the time, I always felt one single problem. There was no guiding principle that would connect the multiple types of tools that are part of your day to day. You might use a task application, you might use a note taking system, you might use a calendar, you might use a folder system. There are multiple types of things that you use to manage your digital assets that are part of your productivity workflow. As part of our day to day, we take a lot of notes, meeting notes, we collect code snippets, we collect stack traces, we grab links from Stack Overflow, we save code snippets from blog posts or links to YouTube videos. We do all of that. But the thing is, if you don't do it with a, a purpose, with a simple way of organizing those things, eventually they will be lost. The important things will be living together with things that likely you can discard. And that is the type of mess that I always felt until the moment that I got into a different system that is quite simple and helps me to organize the multiple types of applications that are part of my day to day. And it's all about how do you keep information, especially notes and files that are important to you. So let's take a look into an example. Let's say you are learning a new technology that you want to adopt in your software. And for that, you will start researching and you will grab information from multiple sources. Like for example, from a blog, you might go to a conference, you might even take a course, or you have a friend that has been using that technology. So you might even have a meeting either with a friend or a colleague, something like that. So all of those different types of sources can originate and usually they they will do it to the same thing and that thing is notes notes can be even small snippets it can be just a few lines bullet points it can even be um google doc or even those notes can be other types of files it might be a csv it might be a powerpoint presentation it might be anything but all of those things are related to the same concept. So the question is, how do you collect all this information in a way that is useful in the future? So what do you do with those notes? Whatever you do with those notes is what will make your note taking system worthy or not. If you are doing the correct thing, they will be useful when you need them. If you are not, you will feel that it's a waste of time that you can't find what you are looking for. It's like if you dump things into a folder and you never get back to them anymore. So what I used to have in the past, and you might be familiar with that, is that I would try to have some kind of structure in place, for example, on my notes application, that would be something like a personal folder, main folder, then I would have something like work related stuff. So that was the main division that I used to have. But the problem was inside of each of those folders, the way that I was organizing things. So what used to happen to me is that if I was in the middle of a client project, for example, something for the client A and the client A, we are implementing a given application. I'm using multiple technologies like let's say Kafka and MySQL, things like that. During the project, I find some things about those technologies that I will need. I could decide to take those notes inside here, the folder of that project. But often also happened that I would, instead of putting them together with the, the project, I will bring a new folder, for example, for the technology, the Kafka, and I will put it there. And sometimes I will even just add them to the root directory or something like that, because it was quite common to just dump things in order to have them there in case I need them. But eventually I would never use them. So 
this destroys any type of system. And if during that research I will find an interesting blog post, I will leave it there in the, my notes on a given folder. But then if I find something like a PowerPoint or a PDF, something that can be useful, I will throw it into a, a folder uh, somewhere on my Google Drive without any relation to these notes. And let's not talk about this personal folder because it was kind of like a mess. Everything related to my personal life would go into the same place. Clearly, the system was broken. And being someone that really likes productivity, I got into a concept that is quite interesting, that is the PARA method. P-A-R-A. It's a method created by Tiago Forte that is so much more than what I will show you today. But if, if you find this video interesting, let me know in the comments and I can deep dive into the multiple components of the PARA method. What I want to show you today is how I'm using the PARA method to organize my digital assets, my digital life. So what is PARA? PARA stands for Projects, Areas, Resources and Archive. A project can be anything that you are working on. For example, if you are moving to a different house, if you are preparing a presentation, if you are working on a, a given feature for a given client, if you are migrating your applications to a different framework, any of those things are projects. Independently on the fact that they are for your personal life or for your professional life, all of those things are projects. And what about areas? Areas are different parts of your life that you are responsible for. It can be a car that you have, it can be your taxes, it can be your kids, it can be your pets. So the way that I see the difference between an area and a project is like if an area is an ongoing responsibility of your life. For example, on my case, an area can be YouTube. That is something that is not a project for me because it's something that I want to keep doing for a long time. But if I'm preparing a new workshop, what I will do is that I will have a project for that workshop. In one, I have a clear goal with a specific deadline, kind of like. And in the other one is something that I will keep going. Doesn't mean that it is forever, but is a responsibility, something that is part of my life that has multiple aspects related to it. Sometimes you will even find that your projects are in the context of a given area, so they are related to that area. It's not that they are inside of that area, but they are related. For example, if I'm doing a major research for a given YouTube video, that can be a project that is related to my area of responsibility of YouTube. Then we have resources. They can be things like quotes or you have found um, an interesting blog post about a given technology that you are not using in your day to day and you want to keep that for later reference eventually that might be needed so resources are those things that you collect it's kind of like your personal library of knowledge and last but not least we have in the folder a section that is the archive the archive is quite interesting because i was used to create things forever so if i took a note that will stay there on that place forever and the archive gives you a way where you can move things that are no longer needed but you want to keep them in case they might be needed let's say that i am planning on next year let me go to a different country or a different city i will do my research i will collect some notes like how to use the public transportation system, where to eat, uh, main attractions, things like that. And I will put all of those inside of a project that is planning that trip. After that trip, I could throw away that folder that has all that information, that impo those important notes about that city. However, if I move it into my archive, eventually they might be useful if someday I go back into that place or if I have a friend that wants to, to visit and ask me for some recommendations. But the advantage of moving it into the archive is that I don't have that clutter inside of my projects folder anymore. So the guiding principle is that there's always a place for something. And when you have a place for something, it will be quite easy to find it. 
and you don't start things by category like you do in a library what you will do is that you will organize it based on when will you need it in which context will you need it so will you be working on that client that has that project of adopting MySQL and Kafka so maybe those notes that you collected re regarding that should be inside of that project folder. So when you sit down working on that project, you have everything together and you can quickly see that you have those things, even if you only get back to it a few months later. And the best part of it is that this system works as the baseline for all the tools that you use. For example, I have my Google Drive, my Tasks application, I have my notes application, all of them use the same organization. So I know that if I'm working a given project, I have a folder for that. I have a notes section for that. And I have um, a list of tasks for that as well. So based on the context, I can see everything together and related. And now can you put that in practice? So let's start with the file system. The thing that we'll do first is that we'll create a folder for those different areas that I told you. So you have the projects, the areas, resources, and archive. So inside of, for example, areas, you might have something like health, taxes, things like that. And on the projects, like a course that you are doing, for example, or let's say that you are migrating .NET to a different version, or you are learning Portuguese, something like that. So this is the base structure that you have. And inside of resources, you will have everything. For example, you might have um, resources regarding book notes, things like um, countries that you have curiosity about them, you might have things about uh, productivity. So you create this space structure on your file system, or for example, if you use something like Google Drive or something like that, you might define this structure there. And then, so if you are using a to-do list, something like, Apple Reminders or Todoist, you can always create groups. Uh, there's always a type of folder or a group that you can create and put list inside based on these categories as well. The other thing that we'll do is do exactly the same structure inside of your Nodes application. I will use Obsidian here, but in fact, the cool thing about this system is that it doesn't matter. You can apply this everywhere. So inside of Obsidian, I will create a few folders, projects, areas, resources, and archive. So inside of each one of them, I can create folders once again based on the project. So let's think about a practical example. Let's say that I got um, an important document that I need to deliver when I report my taxes to the tax authority. What I will do is that since that document is, for example, a PDF, I will grab that PDF go to my file system because it's a file and I will find inside of my areas because taxes is an ongoing responsibility and I will find the folder taxes there. But now let's say that is not a document, but an information that my accountant gave me. So for example, please remind that when you fill your taxes to set a given code in a given field, something like that. On that case, since it's a note and I don't want to forget it, next time I'm reporting my taxes, what I will do is that I will go to my areas on my notes application. If I don't have it yet, I will create the taxes folder. And there, inside of that, I can create a new note about reporting taxes code. And I will paste here everything that my accountant told me. The same happens for projects. For example, I'm working on a migration, a .NET migration. So let's say that I say here, .NET 8 migration. And inside, I will keep notes of several things. And for example, one of them would be something like an error upgrading package X, doesn't matter. And I will paste here all the details. And if I find solution or a link to the solution, I will paste it here. And eventually I will finish this .NET 8 migration. So there's no need to keep these notes here. So what I'll do on that moment is that I can move that into the archive and I move exactly the same folder if I have them in my file system, but also in all the different tools that I'm using to support this system. The important thing is that now you have a place where to put things 
and now you know where to look for them. This way of organizing my digital life is really working for me. But the part method is not only about these four folders. There's much more about it. And if you are curious about that and you like this video, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to bring a new one on the topic as well. And on the meanwhile, I think you should watch this video right here and I will see you soon.